remember back in the early days when I was training formally in the hospital system, learning how to be a pain doctor, I'd gone as a left field thing to a healing retreat conference one weekend and seeing some different models of healing demonstrated. And there was a girl there who told a story about developing long-term pain after she fell off a cliff in the mountains and was stuck in a ravine one long night before the paramedics were able to winch her out the following day. She'd broken a number of bones and gone on to develop long-term pain. And using a different healing model, two people had supported her. They'd really slowed the whole time frame down and taken it back into that initial trauma and looked at a lot of the, the emotions, the deeper aspects of the story around the broken bones and the physical pain. And as they did that, looked at a number of different dimensions of the problem. Really, as they were looking at it, they addressed a spiritual dimension along with the deeper emotions. And over a couple of hours, they worked through a lot of these aspects. And at the end of that time, her pain had resolved. That was really a very pivotal story to me because it contrasted some alternative models, I suppose, alongside the conventional healthcare system approaches. And really since that time, because that was a very pivotal story for me, I've been interested in this issue of the, the deeper meaning, what lies beneath the surface of someone's pain story. The term psychosomatic comes up and some people have asked me, some people in pain have talked to me about this new brain plasticity theory of pain and they say, are you saying that pain is all in my head? Which really goes to the use of the term psychosomatic. I would see, because that's a term we don't use anymore, that that is from our old ways of thinking and it's quite a judgmental term. Really when we were saying medically that someone had a psychosomatic problem, it meant often as I say, in a judgmental way that we didn't believe them. In that old way of thinking, we saw mind and body as quite separate things. So the new theory of, of a sensitized nervous system means that mind and body are linked, they're part of the equation, but it's not a separate mind-body thing and it's not a judgmental statement. It's often the case that where pain persists, there is uh, a change, there is a sensitised pathway at brain level that is just normal, so it's not a judgmental statement. We look often with our team at the deeper story around pain, just going back to the initial triggering event. If someone's pain came from a motor crash, for example, it's a matter of going back to that time and just slowing the story down at that stage. It's looking at linked issues that the anxiety, perhaps post-traumatic stress can be part of the picture as well. But it's really looking back into the time of the accident and maybe emotions that were blocked at that time frame. Uh, that can be part of retraining the brain theory as well.